The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 12th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Glad to be back with you. Sorry about the last two days out there. The, uh, I live on the uh, intercoastal down here in South Florida. The ocean is about 500 yards off of my front door. And so we get a lot of, um, uh, we get a lot of, uh, you know, problems with all the salt just simply corrode things and that's what it did it corroded the uh, it corroded my uh, internet service not here at the house but at the uh, up at the uh, block and uh, it took them a little while to get up to speed but uh, we are up to speed great to be back with you hope you had a last couple of uh, great days out there hey tomorrow morning i'm actually going to do the show from eight to nine uh, so if you want to listen to it live uh, tune in with us tomorrow at eight to nine but we're live right now and i'd love to hear from you you can give us a call at 877-927-6648 if you can't call in we've got you covered you can send me an email steve at tfnn.com and uh, inside the subject heading uh, just put radio show question if you would of course in our top Tigers Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get uh, this show started. Let's take a look at the uh, markets right now. Everything in the uh, green. Uh, Indice-wise, you've got the uh, Dow up 137 points. That's a half a percent. S&P is up six-tenths of a percent, or almost six-tenths of a percent, 18 points. NASDAQ 100 up 36. Russell up 10. Spot volatility index, oddly, is uh, still trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. We'll go take a look at that, but it's trading at 1446. Uh, gold's off two bucks. Silver is up nine cents. Lights We Crude is up 71 pennies, trading out at 59.47, uh, running right into a resistance level, trying to get its change in trend. So we'll take a look at that as well. Lead the charge, excuse me, to the upside. Well, bill, bill.com out there, although I believe this is the first day of trading. Booking Holdings up 13 bucks. You've got uh, Karuna Therapeutics 13, Mettler Toledo up 11, SVB Financial up 9. To the downside, it's Lending Tree. That's 14 bucks. To the downside, nearly 5%. Lululemon off 5.5% or about 13 bucks. Uh, Restoration Hardware down 11, nearly 5% out there. So certainly things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Uh, no request out there. Kind of makes sense. I've been present for the last couple days, so no Nobody knows whether I'm doing a show or not, but that's okay. Actually, it's kind of uh, it's kind of perfect because what do we want to take a look at out here? I, I got to tell you, this is really these are really interesting markets. And today's move higher and spike higher. Let me see if I can pull this up here. I believe it's right here. Yeah. So we're going to start off just taking a look at get a an overall health checkup of the market because it seems kind of healthy, doesn't it? But man, look at this. When I say look at this, now, what we're taking a look at here, folks, you've got the cash indices that's in the upper left, and you've got the S&P 500 sectors, and then we've got the uh, equity futures contracts just below that. And what we have here is you've got uh, really, well, several columns, but uh, three primarily right in the dead center. It says daily, weekly, and monthly RMI, Rhodes Momentum Indicator. Now, uh, this helps us to identify those top and bottom signals out there. And then we have Stevie's uh, red-green line, referred to as the oscillator and change line. You've got either, so if you're trading above it, then that becomes support, as you know. If you're trading below it, such as the uh, Dow Jones Industrials is trading below resistance, Stevie's green line, that's 28.049. We're trading at 28. 042. But that's not the point that I wanted to make. The point that I wanted to make is take a look at all these topping signals. Now, the light yellow uh, is an indication of a change in trend today, or signal today. Of course, the day's not over. But the signal could, uh, not really, not today, it can't uh, um, it vanish. But you've got nearly every indice 
You don't have the socks. You don't have the uh, transports, although I believe the transports may have had a pattern like this, and it's already just traded lower. We can take a look at that out there. If you take a look at the sectors, your top three sectors, the XLK, V, and F, financial and healthcare out there, they've all got the topping signals. Then you go down one more level. That's the communication sector. That's where you've got uh, companies like Facebook and others. Uh, and you can see all these tops uh, signals out here on the daily time frame. Now, here's the key. You can this is this is a signal for the most part. It's a signal versus the actual high just yet. But uh, we've got uh, this. If these do confirm, and we'll go through that confirmation process out here. If they do confirm, uh, folks, we're in for one heck of a change in trend. One heck of a change in trend signal. Now they may not confirm, and that's why we want to. That's why we're very methodical, or I am. Uh, you are too, if you're listening to the show. Very methodical about just waiting for the market to communicate what it wants to do for us with uh, what, it, what it wants to do. Period. Whether it's for us, with us, doesn't really matter out there. But but knowing that, knowing about these potential topping signals, how valuable is that to you? Well, you may say it's not valuable to you at all. For me, I think it's extraordinarily valuable to be able to understand and not get caught up in the emotion of the markets or the emotion of the tweets or whatever it is that might send markets spiraling higher or lower out there. We just want to be able to understand the patterns and how to trade those patterns. So now let's go take a look at the Let's look at the cash indices. We we typically start off by taking a look at the equity futures contracts. We don't have to do that. We can go take a look at the S&P as an example. So in the case of the S&P 500, you're going to see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. Now, we had that pattern in play for a couple of days out there. Uh, let me get my cursor out here. Those couple of days were the uh, days of uh, November 25th and November 26th out there. Now, just because a signal's present doesn't mean it's a top. And in this case, it did not prove out to be a top. Uh, and the reason is because... Uh, uh, it started, the S&P started moving higher with less, with more energy. It actually did that on the day of November 27th. When it did that, it uh, invalidated that pattern. However, we've got a new one that has formed today. The requirement here, there's really two, well, there's several requirements. There's five different elements to this pattern. This is a pattern you absolutely want to know. If you don't know it, if you're not certain of it, if you'd like to learn it, then just go subscribe for 29 days or more, but at least 29 days. Uh, you'll see a workshop an archive workshop on my members page that will explain to you exactly in detail. And this you can use this for any time frame, any instrument out there. But you know, back at the ranch right now, we do have the the pause button is on uh, inside the S. Now, what the S and P 500 has done, it has completed an A to B equal C D pattern. So that's out here. It did the one to about between one and 1.272, and it actually did that on the day after Thanksgiving. If I didn't mention that, let me make sure that I do mention it. This pattern must be confirmed with some type of bearish reversal candle. And that's not what occurred uh, during the last time that we had this uh, uh, pattern that was out here. In fact, you had a gap to the upside, rising window on November 25th, follow through the following day. And then you had another gap up on November 27th out there. But that's how we put this together with the equity futures contracts. We know that the gap up, you know, it shows up in the cash indice because it's trading for six and a half hours versus 23 hours uh, in trading the equity futures contracts out there. So uh, we, if and, and this bear sash says that resistance is actually the high of November 27th. That high is 3154.26. You're at 3160. But if the S&P closed below 3154.26, the A to B equals CD pattern, the sell, the D point is still in place. But you've also now got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator. You've got it for the S&P. You've got it for the Dow, for the NDX 100, the Russell 2000. You name it. It's pretty much there. It's going to be very interesting. Steve Rhodes with TFE. You're right. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 146, S&P is up 20. Now, we took a look at all those roads momentum indicator signals in the cash indices, S&P 500 sectors, and so forth. And here, I'd mentioned as we open the uh, show that the spot volatility index is um, is still trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. That level is 14.15. Now, we're trading at 14.38. At the end of the day, that means the close today. If the spot volatility index is back below its 50-day exponential moving average, pretty good signal that uh, markets are going to continue to move higher. Doesn't again, doesn't matter about the rose momentum indicator signal out there. It only matters when that signal generates the, um, in this case here, because we're looking at tops, the bearish reversal candle out there. Um, but with price still above the 50-day exponential moving average, as I say, these markets are really interesting. All right, now, now I can understand why we're not seeing whether why the downside is not getting any traction even with the spot volatility index being above its 50-day exponential moving average and the reason is because of strong market breadth market breadth uh, will trump not referring to the president uh will just simply uh, trump uh, issues with regard to liquidity out here and that's what we have we take a look at the new york stock exchange the advanced decline oscillator reading uh, that is panel number two uh, on this uh, chart that you're looking at, panel number one is the price of the New York Stock Exchange out there, and panel number three is the spot volatility index. In order for there to be traction to the downside, you need both market breadth to be in a bearish position or sellers to have control, and that would be trading below the zero threshold line at the same time with the spot volatility index up above its 50-day exponential moving average. So we don't have that there, but still that, 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 that spot volatility index above the 50-day should give most people pause out there. 
And if we take a look at levels of resistance, what is going on inside the market? Look, we could take a look at the daily equity futures contracts, but they've just rolled over to March. And so the data here to generate our profiles is is okay, but suspect. You and I have better. And the way that we have better is we use Stevie's synthetic contract. So if we move over to the ES Mini, here's what we're going to see out here. You're going to see that price is right now trading into the top of its daily profile. That's 31.58, and trading in the top of its weekly profile. And the weekly profile is also 31.58. So 31.58 is the number. We're trading at 31.61. No idea where the ES Mini closed the day. But if it closes back below 3158, there's no breakout that is in place as we speak just yet. Now, we've got a question that has come in. Let's go uh, take a look at that. Uh, we've got two questions out there. One that came in by email earlier, uh, and this is from Alan. And Alan wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol MRVL. That's Marvell. Says, I'm long. This may, a long, may be a long-term hold position. Due to participants 5G rollup, blah blah blah. Do you please do your analysis and your tools for all three time frames? So let's go take a look at Marvell. Here's what we know about Marvell right now, Alan, and take a look at the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. Is that uh, prices found resistance this month, this week, but not today. Today, price is above resistance, and that's the 25.13 level. Uh, that is the top of the daily profile. However, you and I can see this little island top out here inside of Marvell. And you're hoping that this can go back. And uh, and by an island top, let me just simply expand out the uh, daily time frame chart. An island top is where you have a... a um, a session or a period of sessions, such as, let me just go ahead and, and kind of rectangle it in here, or square it in, uh, which means from the trading day of uh, November 4th all the way through the trading day of December 12th. And what happened on November 4th is price had gapped up, so it creates this little gap or area in price. And then what we see that takes place on the trading session of uh, December the 3rd, price gaps down. And so the uh, bottom of that uh, gap is uh, from December 2nd. That low is 25.78. The high today is 25.75. So there's still a three penny island reversal. So you just need, I'm not suggesting, now look, an island top is a bearish reversal is a bearish bearish pattern out there nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern but right now that's what's present that you want to really keep your eye on I'm not suggesting that you get out of the uh, trade you've got a profit I'm just suggesting that you maintain some kind of stop in this it's 83 cents is the average daily true range you need to have a stop that is in excess of 83 cents because you don't want to be stopped out just from average normal daily movement of the equity so that's your concern now if price can close uh, back above 2578 officially uh, this will have rescued those uh, stranded uh, shareholders which have been for a couple of weeks out there at that island top now on the weekly time frame if this is just a counter trend reversal in Marvell Technologies just by using the profiles out here then price in essence has stopped where it should stop why do we say that? Just simply in taking a look at the top of the weekly profile, 2566. And at 2645 out there, that is the uh, top of the monthly profile. So the monthly and the weekly, and you mentioned here long-term hold, you really want to see price close above those levels. So without even looking at the other charts out here, what we know is that um, be cautious, be cautious. Price has definitely made its way up to resistance levels. That could be a counter trend move out there. Now, when we say counter trend move out here, Alan, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, this here has formed uh, really two roads momentum indicator signals, both at resistance levels. So if you're looking at this to be a long-term hold, right now you've got these important topping patterns out there, very similar to what we looked at that may be setting up inside the equity markets, hasn't set up, but it has all of these signals. I can't recall a time... Uh, in the past, uh, where I've seen so many of the uh, equity indices at the same time generating that same uh, signal out here. Here, you're looking at Marvell on a weekly basis. You can see the bottom out here that was formed with the Rose Momentum Indicator. You can see the high back in March of 2018. Was that 2018? Yeah, forms a high with the Rose Momentum Indicator. You can see the high that formed out here back in July of this year. The Rose Momentum Indicator pushing price back to a support area, that TD9 breakout level. You can see the shooting star out here uh, that formed on November 15th. You just got to be careful because of these topping signals. Again, 
you know, resistance can fail, but you've got the, at this stage here, it's a counter trend rally. And really, price would need to close above 2614 on a weekly basis in order for uh, the charts to suggest something different out there. So, um, you know, I, I hope that helps you out. And if I, let me just put up the daily time frame chart out here, the daily time frame chart. Look, I get and understand why price found support back here uh, in the uh, December 5th area. Price was coming back to the 2553 level. That was the uh, TD9 uh, breakout support area out here. So all this makes sense. I would just simply be careful because of that uh, weekly and then what the monthly uh, chart is uh, doing as well. So thanks for writing in, Alan. Hope you have a, a great day. Now, Ruby, we wanted to take a look at upside for corn. So if we take a look at uh, March corn out here, uh, it's had a, a nice move here today. Uh, and in essence, uh, this is the second time, Ruby, in this area where March corn has, uh, well, it, 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 con it confirmed... It confirmed the A to B equals CD pattern. Let me get my cursor out here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Not that that was a problem, but let's take a look at this here. So it confirms this A to B equals CD pattern back here when it generates this bull sash on November the 12th out there. But that pattern got violated because we saw a close below that uh, bull sash candle out there. And it, uh, it moved below there on November 15th and November 18th. But now you've got another bullish, another bull sash candle, um, oddly enough. You're asking me for the upside target. It's really simple. 387.75. That's the resistance level that was established by that TD nine count breakdown. So on a daily basis, it's 387.75. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that have transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, Dow's uh, up 138, S&P 18, NASDAQ up uh, 35 points out there. Let's continue looking at the uh, charts. No requests. Phone lines are open. Email lines are open. Steve at TFNN.com. Uh, just please put radio show question, of course, any ping inside our Tiger's Den out here. So uh, let's continue looking at the – let me switch back to the uh, futures contracts out here. You'll see all the exact same patterns. Now, if we look at the ES Mini, let's just start with that. We were looking at its TAS market profiles earlier. Here you can see price moving higher, doing less route of energy. But as long as price closes above the high from this uh, bearish engulfing candle – let me get my cursor out here. That was in the trading session – of uh, November 29th, any close above that level, that level is 3155, you know, is 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 bullish. But we'll use those TAS market profiles that we looked at. I believe that was 3158 as the uh, number. And if we see that close, uh, then what it would look like to me is that uh, prices should move higher. Uh, throughout the uh, through the end of the year. Now, how much higher? You know, great question. To answer how much higher, when if prices above all market profiles, then we either need to see an A to B equals CD pattern, which I'm sure we can go find, or we can take a look at the horizontal trading ranges. Let's just do that uh, because I've got a tab right here that's got our ES mini horizontal trading ranges, daily, weekly, and the uh, monthly out here. And as we take a look at that, you see a conglomeration in the 3184-ish area. And uh, so that's really, if price can clear that, then you could see 3294, which would get you into the 3300 area. Whether or not the roads went to indicator signals would be present uh, at that time if the markets make that move, I don't know. Um, we just know they're present. And what that means is that you and I will just simply wait for the market to communicate to us, which is if we do see a bearish reversal candle. I don't know that that could take place today. There, there may be able to be some shooting stars out there or something, but uh, they're always – well, I suppose – look, I, I don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, I do know that uh, what action to take right now is just, just a warning shot. Uh, across the ball, ball well, across the uh, bow of our boat out here. But 3184 area is a fairly significant resistance uh, range. Above that, then you're looking at about the 3294 area. Let's come back and take a look. Let's do really, in essence, I guess, do the same thing. Let's take a look at the NQ this time, uh, because if markets are going to move higher, certainly the NQ is going to be a participant out here. And let's take, whoops, let's uh, try to just type in the proper. Uh, synthetic contract out here and Q is always good. Uh, let's get rid of the space. Let's add a space. There we go. So here's our NQ. In just a moment, we'll get the uh, so price above the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly out there. So the NQ is 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 uber strong, at least with regard to its TAS market profile. So if we take a look at the daily time frame here for the NQ, what do we see? We see price moving higher, doing less relative energy, trading above the resistance level established by that sell, the D point of that dark cloud cover from the day after Thanksgiving out there. And um, um, so where's price headed to next? Well, here's the A to B equals CD patterns out there. This would give us a price target of 86.99. Let's go out to uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Everybody is very pleased, Steve, that you're back online. We were starting to wonder. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, no. it's not your fault. Yeah, yeah, it's a we, we thought yesterday we might have it by game time, but uh, just just wasn't working. So uh, <laughs> 80. anyways, I tell what, you what, sir, what it is. Yeah. the uh, Delray Beach uh, Public Library probably has an Internet connection for you. Well, uh, I was doing my newsletters uh, from uh, Panera Bread. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, uh, Steve, I wanted of, to uh, follow up with clause. you, please. Um, uh, the ticker symbol I gave Dylan was um, uh, ticker symbol XOP. That is an ETF yeah. of oil and gas producers. I wanted to ask if you take a look at XOP and XES. You recall back on, uh, I think it was the week of uh, Thanksgiving, I, I had started speculations on long those uh, energy equities and uh, the crude oil 
futures, particularly the deferred futures that are in steep backwardation. And all those trades are starting to work. Uh, regrettably, I bought and actually already uh, exited uh, at small gains uh, last week, I think it was, the uh, XOP and XES. But if you could pull up those two ETFs and see where they now stand using your profiles <clears throat> and your um, – uh, your uh, DeMarc indicators, I'd appreciate it, sir. Yeah, so, John, uh, just out of curiosity, do you make any trading decisions on XOP based upon what LightSweet Crude is doing? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very much in the camp of Larry Pesavento. I look at each instrument on its own merits. But, the, uh, but you also know I'm looking to trade on intermediate-term uh, basis and uh, I only do so when I uh, can uh, at least have a guesstimate as, as to why fundamentals would line up and drive an intermediate-term rally or decline. And clearly in this particular case, uh, a rally phase in crude oil futures, both nearby and distant down the calendar, as well as the energy uh, industry ETFs and, the, you know, the common stocks, uh, they'd all be obviously um, – uh, uh, subject to the same, you know, fundamental factors. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And, and so the reason I ask is, and I'll just start here with regard to light sweet crude, which right now is trading in between support and resistance. Support out here is 58.67. That's Stevie's green line, the oscillator and change line. And resistance is another green line. It's the horizontal line you're looking at. That's the TD nine count breakdown level of 59.60. Now, what light sweet crude did about four or five days ago was it generated wave number seven or potentially, well, it did. It was wave number seven, no matter how we look at it, which can be a topping signal. You know, light sweet crude is going to be in day or bar seven of a, a TD nine count out there. So price at resistance. If, if to the extent that there's some type of uh, correlation in intermediate term uh, for you with regard to XOP or XES and uh, what light sweet crude does, you really want to see price close above 59.60 to tell you that there's more rally left in it out there, which is your resistance area. So that's one thing I'd be watching. Now back to the actual X. Uh, XOP out here. One of the things that we looked at, John, uh, and this is from the longer term side of it, is the monthly time frame chart, which so far has a uh, bullish uh, reversal candle uh, at the bottom of a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It's also going to be bar number eight or appears like, well, I can't, I can't really say that. I can't say that. But, but there is at least a, uh, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, if the XOP is really going to take off topside out here, what it needs to do is uh, close above 2322 out there. Now, that number is going to change as price moves higher, but just kind of use that as a uh, guideline level. If price were to close above that, that's Stevie's red line or the oscillator on change line on a monthly basis, that would be a nice bullish signal out there. But that's a monthly time frame chart. When I go back and I take a look at the uh, daily or the weekly, it becomes less clear to me what the XOP is uh, trying to do. I don't have have a, a real good bottoming signal out here. I can see, you know, triple bottom, so to speak, out here. Uh, bar number six of a TD setup nine count with the XOP having really strong daily resistance at 23.98. Hey, John, we've got to go to a hard break, but uh, if you uh, stay through the break, we'll go back and take a, answer any questions here about XOP, and we'll take a look at XES. That's for Thank John you. in Philly. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. Hey, John, I really like that uh, library idea. And plus, um, I, I won't eat as much. You're stuck in a Panera. You know, you're, they, they have too many goodies there to be eaten. I'll uh, tell you, lots of temptations in that place. Exactly, exactly. So uh, XES is a whole lot better looking um, ETF than XOP, at least from, from my standpoint. Now today, for example, uh, if we take a look at it, the top of its daily profile, that would be the left-hand panel on this uh, set of charts that you're looking at, is at uh, price at 755. This is trading at 761. Now, if price does close above 755 today and tomorrow, I'd like to see two closes above or below support or resistance. This would be a close above support. Um, that would be a very strong message, not just so much because a close above support, but because the center of that profile is at 745 versus the bottom at 705. So this is truly a bearish structured profile. The sellers are lined up between 745 and where we're trading right now. The question is, can those sellers push price back below the 755 level? If they do, then a key level of resistance, and you'll know it, will have held. And if price closes above that, you're looking for a second close above that tomorrow. Should you get that, that would signal a move up to, and now the weekly profile is bullish in structure, the exact opposite. The center line is at 729, the bottom at 680. Those two are much closer in proximity to each other than the top at 853. And so the combination of the two says, hey, you close above 755, you do it for two days in a row, you're up above the center of that bullish structured weekly profile at 729, 853 becomes your price target. The, the monthly um, isn't really in play right now, at least as far as signals, because price is down 
below the bottom of the profile. If we look at the daily time frame chart, this bottom with a TD setup nine count. It did it on November 21st out there. You asked about those levels. This is going to be bar number seven. The resistance out here is 828 on the daily time frame chart. That was a TD setup nine count. So you got 828, you got 853 on the uh, weekly. Those are the levels that it appears right now as of 144 in the afternoon where the XES is headed to. And the weekly time frame chart here, you had mentioned intermediate media term uh, time frame out there. Maybe I've misunderstood your use of that. But look, from a intermediate term time frame, weekly time frame chart, this has confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It has done it several times. It confirmed it once the week of October 25th with a bullish engulfing candle. It did it again uh, the week of November 22nd with a hammer candle. It did it the week after with a bullish engulfing. The XES is signaling to us that this is a fairly significant bottom. Why the XES is looking so much better than XOP? obviously some of the constituents inside it. But I really do like the look of the XES chart right now. What question? You answered uh, everything I was interested in. I appreciate it. Um, oh, perfect. I'll be buying the XES on the next daily chart dip. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Sounds great. Well, watch that 755 level. That, that old resistance could become, you know, new support. Or 745. 745 to 755 would be the area that you'd be looking at. Excellent. Thanks again. Bye now. Hey. You bet. Uh, thanks for calling. And thanks for that library idea. Never really stopped to think about it. Huh? That's folks in between in, in those walls there between the library. That's where all the knowledge is. It's, of course, I don't think they were open at six in the morning, 630 in the morning out there. But uh, so be it. In any event, uh, we do have another request out here. This one coming in from HD. HD wants to take a look at Apple. So let's take a look at Apple, try to figure out what it's doing. It is trading lower today, off by a dollar and change out there. So not really a big deal. But let's go take a look at its three time frames out here, try to figure out where this is trading in relationship to its profile, support or resistance. Above the daily, which is 282.25, above the weekly, above the monthly. So really, if we take a look at Apple, everything looks uh, good, hunky-dory out here. Now, I don't think this chart has updated. Uh, for today's candle session out here. Um, yeah, it hasn't. But um, And so my apology to, for that, HD. You just wanted me to take a look at it. I don't know if there was anything else. So I guess you wrote in yesterday. Um, please look at Apple. We can sum up a, quite a bit. Uh, the newsletter did show a topping signal. Thought it'd make, make 300 bucks. So... Um, so here's the daily time frame. You've got a confirmed road momentum indicator pattern. That happened out here on uh, no, December the 9th when that bear sash candle. So uh, it, what this says is you need to see a close above the high of either the, well, in this case here, it's going to be the high of the prior session out there. That's the high of those two candles. That's 271. And what price did today is it ran into resistance. That's Stevie's green line out there. There's no breaks of support. You say you have a nice profit out there. Um, again, I, I don't know what all that means, but price is not broken through support. For me, price would have to close below 261, so another seven, eight bucks to the downside. That's the bottom of its daily profile in order to say there could be, in, in order to really say that there's some problems out here. Um, and those problems would take price down to about the 237 area. Uh, that is the TD9 breakout area. So that's the uh, daily. The weekly is going to be in bar number seven. So no top just yet here. And last week, uh, what we saw is price move back, tested support area. That was Stevie's green line. That is now 260.50. Last week was lower. But what price did last week would just simply pull back and test a key level of support. And then on the longer term, the longer horizon, it's not there yet. But what you have is really two patterns that could be forming here. Uh, you've got the TD9 count this month is uh, the month of December. We've seen a higher high. So if a TD9 count is going to identify a top, uh, that can occur on either bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9, such as an example of the bar following 9 and the Rhodes Momentum Indicator back in September of uh, 2012. We're looking at a monthly time frame chart. Uh, that generated, the, so you had, and it's the same setup that you have going on right now, HD, with the exception being you don't have the bearish reversal candle out here. So no reason, a reason to be cautious, but not a reason to uh, exit your long trade that you're in. You've got a winning position, uh, not a, 
look, an aggressive trader, I can understand the reason to go ahead and take the short because of the confirmed signal on the daily time frame out there. But, you know, without any clear breaks of support makes it makes it a bit iffy out there. In fact, if you look at the daily profiles out here, you know, the new one that just formed, uh, that's not so new. It's about four or five days old. This is bearish in structure, price above the top of that at 268.25 out there. Um, uh, and, and here, what price pulled back a couple of days ago on December 9th, what price came back to was that center level. That's why I gave John the uh, the range on XES. That, that range, if you didn't notice it, was also the center of its, uh, the center in the top of its uh, daily bear structured profile. Same thing here in Apple, bear structured price trading above the uh, above that level. So uh, topping signals galore, what we see in Apple is uh, HD is like we've seen uh, today. You just take a look at the S&P 500 sectors and, and all the cash indices out there. And um, if there's, look, if, uh, look, I, I, if there's a, it's just if there's a bearish reversal candle, and then we can identify levels of support. We know what the markets are going to uh, do out here, um, uh, and and we just have to we just have to let the markets do what they do for you and I to not get caught up in an HD. I'm not just talking to you, all of us out there, not get caught up into the emotions out here of the market. You and I are pattern traders. We just pay attention to the patterns and we wait for them to confirm. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back 
got, uh, folks, hey, don't forget tomorrow, uh, please listen in uh, from 8 to 9 if you can. The show will be replayed uh, in one at 1 to 2, but uh, I'll be recording the show. I've got a, a prior obligation. And we'll record it live from 8 to 9. Take a look at the futures market, see what it means out there. I think the last uh, instrument, in essence, that we're going to be taking a look at as we go into the uh, two-minute wrap here, uh, Joe had uh, sent in a request. And Joe's question is, what do you think of JNUG for a long trade today? Now, Joe, I don't know uh, if you are – I don't know what your time frame horizon is when you say just today – day trade or what have you. So uh, let me just step back and take a look. Now, we know that gold, the price of gold, and the mining equities are directionally correlated. So if we're going to get this right, um, really, quite frankly, paying attention to the uh, 3X uh, ETF chart out there is probably not going to help us as much as paying attention to gold. So here's what we know about gold. Um, in, in the upper left-hand corner, is the uh, daily time frame. Upper right is the weekly. Lower left is the monthly. Lower right is the quarterly. Now, what we can see here on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame, you can see the price is trading between profiles. So what I want you to understand, Joe, is there's no breakout. There's also no breakdown right now. There's a, definitely a series of lower highs and lower lows inside of gold. And if you look at the last five weeks, I would just take a look at the right-hand panel, upper right-hand panel out there, the weekly time frame chart. You look at the bodies of those questions. Somebody has their thumb, this is metaphorically speaking, on the price of gold. And it's not really moving a whole lot out here. So I would be patient. If you're asking me where would you buy into Junior Nugget, well, that would either be gold testing 1460, the bottom of its daily profile, or 1435.30, the bottom of its weekly, which also lines up with the bottom of the monthly at 1433. So unless your question, Joe, was about intraday, and price here today rejected the top of its daily profile on the daily basis out here, at a minimum, wait to 1460 before you attempt that trade. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two great hours are left. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien after that. And then I'll be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning to kick things off on Friday the 13th. I love it. That's my lucky day. Lucky to do a show with you early tomorrow morning. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.